Hi, I'm Mary Kopsinski, the CEO of Regolytics, talking to you from a ball pit with my sick kid. What's new? Here's your update on this week's 17,239 regulatory alerts. The regulator of the week is seemingly all of them. This seems to be the week of joint announcements, starting with our wonderful bank regulators. Yet another California bank, First Republic, went into crisis with the California financial regulator taking possession on May 1st, which put it into the FDIC's hands as receiver, and poof, J.P. Morgan bought it the same day. As I said, it's a sadly well-worn path. Also cooperating this week, both the FDIC and the Federal Reserve released their reports on what happened with Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, which can be summarized into poor risk management in a rapid growth environment. But the regulators also pointed the finger on themselves. The Fed observed that at the time of its failure, Silicon Valley Bank had 31 unaddressed safe and soundness supervisory warnings, which is triple the average number of peer banks. If you ask me, I think there is going to be a real case to have those regulatory findings become public because they do impact investor decisions. But as of now, they are highly confidential. And I know this because I personally have had to sign double dog secret confidentiality agreements just to view a letter that the Fed had written to various banks. In response to all of this, the FDIC also put out a comprehensive overview of the deposit insurance system and their proposed options for reform to address some of the issues that came up with these recent bank failures. And that's not all. The Fed, the FDIC, the OCC, the NCUA, and the CFPB put out a joint alert reminding everyone one last time that on June 30th, 2023, LIBOR is really, really, really dead. May it rest in peace dead. So all of those contracts better be over and done with by now. It's time for the new normal. And then in our final example of joint announcements, four federal agencies jointly pledged to use their power to protect people from bad use of artificial intelligence or AI. They vowed to uphold America's commitment to the core principles of fairness, equality, and justice as these technologies do impact civil rights, fair competition, consumer protection, and equal opportunity. So there you have it. Prepare yourselves for AI-related enforcement actions. It will start small and it will grow. The four agencies to watch at the federal level are the Civil Rights Division of the United States Department of Justice. So that's, you know, everybody, it's the DOJ the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, so that's all the banks, hedge funds, RIAs, etc. the Federal Trade Commission, so that's also basically everyone, and the EEOC, or the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which is basically any company that has employees, so also everybody. And if you're in Tennessee, the governor signed into law the Genetic Information Privacy Act, that is one of the many state level regulations impacting technology. And the topic of the week is just more of the same, financial regulation. The SEC is reopening the comment period for their changes to beneficial ownership. This means you need to know not only who you're doing business with, but you need to know who owns the people you're doing business with, but also who owns the people who own the people who you're doing business with, and basically everyone all the way down to the two eyes and the nose of each individual person you're doing business with. The FDIC is officially going for T plus one settlement dates. Good luck with that. And finally, I love Hester Pierce. I love her. I don't even always agree with her, but I love her mind and the way she thinks. Her speech this week at Eurofi in Sweden were great. Look, I'm an ESG proponent. Maybe it's because I was a nonprofit fundraiser for 10 years before I got on Wall Street, a bleeding heart whatever. Or maybe it's because in 2013, I actually tried to launch an ESG rating agency that failed because it was eight years too early. 
But here's what I liked. She said the regulator shouldn't mandate the type of rating or centralize the standard because then everyone will just follow it and it would concentrate capital into those standards for better or for worse. And I get the argument on both sides. Having harmony on standards is good because it encourages the flow of commerce, but we really know so little about the effect and impact of these standards. So in, in this case, it makes sense to test out a lot of them and see which ones work. As we say in the United States, you leave it to the laboratory of the 50 states. So she got me there on the logic train and I think she might be right. Anyway, that's it for Regalytics this week. Join me every Wednesday for your dose of regulatory news.